Now, when it comes to the Trident 660, there is a lot to unpack about this bike, which is, you know, quite surprising given its size. Welcome back Sprocketeers to another episode of Safi Sprocket. I'm your host Safi Sprocket and today I'm going to be giving you my personal thoughts and reviews on the Trident 660. So I won't be running over the specs of the bike in too much detail because I do have a separate video for this. However, long story short, the Trident has been Triumph's entry to the middle weight entry level roadster and with a retail starting price of £7,395 and what a contender it is. Now, I've been fortunate to experience a plethora of weather while loaning this bike, including rain, sun, night, night and rain, day. I've had city traffic, I've had suburban traffic, I've had countryside and a tiny bit of mud. And basically, here's what I found. So first, let's take a 360 tour around the bike. Now, when it comes to the style of a bike, I always feel like it's a bit of a Marmite situation where you either love the way a bike looks or you don't. Now, I feel like the Trident 660 sits right between the middle of classic looking bikes and modern looking bikes. Now, for me, the bike looks both aggressive and sporty. You have a muscular fuel tank with those circular headlights. And I get that it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's certainly mine. So I did mention in my specs video that I'm five foot seven and the bike comes up to just below my waist. Now, I think this is an absolute great height for new riders, shorter riders, returning riders, or even riders who have recently lost their confidence. Now, moving the bike around is also fairly easy. I only weigh 120 pounds and I could quite comfortably push it forward, rotate it, and also do the super lazy tiptoey 16 point turn when I repeatedly got lost. One of these days, I'm going to learn directions. So the seating position of the Trident is a typical sit up and beg. I personally find this super comfortable to ride. Ordinarily, when it comes to sit up and beg bikes, I do tend to find the seats to be a bit solid. I would put a seat cushion on my motorcycle because I'm a bit soft. However, I didn't really feel the need to do that with the Trident. Now, the biking position for a pillion, however, I personally think it's a little bit squished. The pilly pegs are quite high up. But maybe that's deliberate, you know, maybe it's for like, oh, sorry, I'd love to take you out. But, you know, it's a tiny bike. You'll get covered in mud and you're going to ache. Better stay at home. You know, let's just, you know, pros and cons, depending on your living situation. It is a very strange situation for me to be in where I just don't have a back of a bike. <laughs> Now, I'd like to comment on the bike's ABS, but I'm going to be honest, I'm a new gen biker. I've never rode a bike without ABS, so I can't really comment on them. However, the brakes are pretty good, 10 out of 10, super sharp, and I didn't rear end the vehicle. So, there we go. Oh, I just love it. Whoop. Oh, the brakes are good. Oh. Ooh. Now, onto the headlights. You have your full and your dim beams, but it is worth noting there is no option to flash. Now, I personally prefer the Royal Wave when I'm stuck in traffic as opposed to flashing my headlights, so it's not bothered me personally, but I could see why it might annoy other people. Now, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue if you're a new rider, because usually by this point you've got enough to think about behind the bars. But I will say this, my 90s in a video game nerd loved how these lights felt like a video game trigger. So straight off the bat, in terms of tyres, the bike comes preloaded with some crazy looking shoes, aka the Michelin Road 5 tyres. Now I was super impressed with the Road 5s, they're extremely confidence inspiring and I'm actually quite surprised that these come preloaded on the bike as standard. It's also worth pointing out that when it does come to tyre pressure, it's super easy to pump up your bike tyres with the right angle valve. Now when it comes to checking the oil on the Trident, there is a dipstick located at the bottom right hand side of the bike. However, I couldn't actually get it open because I was too weak and it was screwed on pretty tight. So when it comes to lubing the chain, luckily the Trident I was loaning already had paddock spools on it, so cleaning and lubing the chain isn't a difficult task. But also, once again, even if you're unable to put your bike on a paddock stand, it's light enough that you can push it around and spray some WD-40 every second step. And if you want to know what the horn sounds like, well, it sounds a little bit like this. Taking the seat off the bike is super, super easy. You basically just put the key in the side of the bike and rip it off. Now, obviously, when you first take the seat off, as you can see, there isn't a great deal of spare space. And one of the biggest things that went through my mind is if I own this bike, where would I put my tracker? And obviously, this is where the aftermarket accessories come into play with Triumph, because you can actually opt for a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week tracking and monitoring system. 
So the rear hugger does tend to be a source of contention amongst bikers. Some people love it, some people hate it. But what I will say is, I would not want to be a pilly on the back of this bike because the amount of mud that it throws up behind itself, it's quite astronomical, I'm not going to lie. Onto the sound of the bike. So there is a very sleek, underslung, three-in-one exhaust system which produces the most amazing sound that I have ever heard. Like, I completely fell in love with this bike when I fired it up. Okay, let's get going. We've not got a lot of sunlight. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, I was actually quite surprised that it's a full Euro 5 Align exhaust system because it sounded amazing straight out the box. And usually when, you know, you get a bike with a stock exhaust, it sounds okay, but you know that there's a lot more that can be done. Nonetheless, I did have a quick Google online because mods are a big part of owning a motorbike and there are a few companies offering aftermarket exhausts. Now, this is something that I did wonder about given the location and the size of the exhaust on the Trident, but it is possible to swap it out if you do want something a little bit more hooligan. Now, I really liked the slip assist clutch and I think it makes it a lot easier when riding in urban environments and it does help prevent rider fatigue. Now, the only downside is that the clutch isn't adjustable, which can be a bit of a downside for smaller hands like mine. However, overall, the lever was perfectly manageable. I just wanna to touch on the TFT LCD integrated dashboard. I really like how minimalistic and uncluttered the design is. It's pretty simple and I'll be honest, the fact that it's possible to connect your phone with your bike, I'm sold. Take my money. Let's go. Hey guys, while I have your attention, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can stay tuned for more amazing bike content. Don't forget that every single subscriber helps support the channel, so get it done. Now onto the second part of the video, the actual riding experience of the Trident. If you're expecting a manic experience, then this probably isn't the bike for you. However, if you're a new rider like myself, then it's a perfect machine with tons of low down and mid range power. Now, I'm pretty fortunate to live in an area that's made up of city, suburbs, and countryside, so I don't have to venture too far to test the bike against various conditions. Now, I could tell you all about my first impressions of the Trident, or I could just simply show you. Okay, now where are the indicators? Oh, same place every bike is that on. Oh, this feels really weird. Oh. Okay, there we go. did eventually calm down after the third day. So starting with city life. Now for me, this bike is absolutely perfect for the city. With its narrow body and low down power, filtering through heavy traffic was a breeze. In terms of line of sight, you have an upright seating position with a fantastic field of view, large wide mirrors, and the machine itself is extremely agile and light. The Trident really does make filtering through traffic a breeze. On to countryside. So I did take the Trident out for a spin amongst the sheep, and while it's technically handled fantastic on the dirt-ridden bumpy roads, I did have concerns with the amount of dirt it was kicking up. Although, I'll be honest, mostly my concerns were that I didn't know if Trident would loan me another bike after they see the state of the one that I hand back. A lot of other vloggers have commented that they think that the Trident's more suitable to a city rather than the countryside, however, I think that the Michelin 5 tyres makes all the difference. And while I wouldn't want to take this bike touring for days on end, I still think it's a really great machine for a day up in the twisties. So let's touch on some adverse riding conditions. For starters, let's talk about riding in the rain. So I was fortunate enough to get caught up in the rain on the first day of riding this bike. Of course, whilst I was wearing my summer clothes as well, just to make things even more enjoyable. Now the Road 5s are pretty well known for being excellent wet tyres and honestly they did live up to their reputation. I genuinely believe that regardless of the weather conditions, the Trident is a bike that installs confidence in the rider. And this includes riding in the rain. With the addition of the built-in riding modes, it brings a sense of confidence no matter what the weather conditions are. 
and when you do switch modes you can feel a variation in the throttle control. So now let's talk about riding in the dark. So riding in the dark on the Trident was actually a lot more enjoyable than the wheels I have sat in the garage. And although the GoPro doesn't pick it up very well, the lights on the bike are insanely strong and visibility was pretty good. They have a great widespread and a long throw so you can actually see quite far ahead. Now my experience of bike lights so far haven't been great, in fact they've always been a bit poor, but on the Trident they are genuinely fantastic. And although I did have that sunset wind chill growing on, I still really enjoyed riding around in the dark on this bike. And there we have it. This is my review of the Trident 660. Now, if you'd like to stay tuned for more great bike content, don't forget to hit subscribe. In the meantime, my name's Safi Sprocket, signing off. Ooh, it's getting cold.